Okay, now we're at the Cape Point, the most northern part of Fraser Island, uh, known for GTs where the, the rip comes past and forms this nervous water, which we're always looking for in, in these areas to look for a GT. And uh, I've taken one of the wild dog poppers. The guys are all out with uh, spoons, chisel nose, and needle nose plugs. And uh, we'll see if we can get some attention of of a nice jeet. Yeah, they don't apparently get the really big ones up to 20 kilos. Um, but we'll definitely draw some attention with with that. And I'm just, I've put it on my grinder elite to be able to put it far enough and have some distance on it. And uh, just using my Saltus 8000 to do the trick. Dorian and Don both got a double hookup on some really good queen fish while I was messing around with the camera. Now at spots like these, you're either on the spot with a bait in the water when the fish comes past or you lose out. Now this is really great fun on the lighter tackle. They're really good fighters and can be quite acrobatic. Little queen fish. It's a change to a little uh snook spoon because the um, it was a little bait ball out there so that fish probably be about the same size and then uh, yeah flicked in and uh, got a got a little one with this uh, power angler version 2 made uh, for this market and uh, my BG I think it's a 4000 with Kingfisher braid and a 20 pound leader on it we we'll go. send him back As you can see, we are on the almost perfect uh, Fraser Island. A really lovely destination of an island, 140 kilometers long. You come with a barge onto it here in Australia, just off uh, north of Brisbane. And uh, we're at the furthest, well, the northern part called the Cape, uh, where we're spinning a bit, where both currents from both sides of the islands meet and form a nice rip here which is good structure where you can look for all sorts of game fish, the GTs, the queen fish. Um, it doesn't look deep enough to, to get the Spanish mackerel, but they do get them here. So I can't actually say that, it's on a low tide now. And uh, yeah, really a destination where everybody, everybody comes to the, um, from this area in Brisbane and surrounds to come and have a great fishing time. Camping sites from the top, all designated, well organized. There's even a shop on the island. You can even buy fuel on the island. Um, guys, pull their boats up as you can see behind me um, and they launch it. Yeah, hang on, there's another fish. Unfortunately, Dorian dropped that one. Um, Dorian um, and uh, Don is from Kingfisher, Australia. And uh, they were kind enough to bring us out here to Fraser Island so we can experience the way the Aussies fish. The weather was a bit, uh, kind of was not in favor of us, meaning there wasn't enough working water this past couple of days, very flat. So we got some action at night time and sometimes in the morning on the sharks. That came through, but on the edible sides, very, very clean water, very flat. Uh, very little rock structure on Fraser, minimal, almost none. And uh, so you really need some wave action over the banks and stuff to really get them a, a spot to feed. And uh, there hasn't been too much of that. This looks brilliant where the two currents meet, so we'll see. Maybe as a, I think that this will work well from the high tide sucking out again. Um, it should stay here all the time with the tide even pushing in. Water all pushes out. There's a sandbar, probably four, five hundred meters out. You can see, and uh, then there's a sandbar about hundred meters. Yeah, um, and both currents coming up the eastern side, coming up the the western side. They both meet here and suck out. Beautiful dunes in the back. I don't think you guys can clearly see it there. Um, it looks like sand that that uh, no one's ever been on. No tracks. No nothing. 
really unspoiled. We've got the Power Angler Poseidon V2. Um, this is the heavy version, it's 11 and a half foot and it's running uh, 60 to 120 grams. And we're going to be casting out whoop, just one of the killer spoons out there. Um, and we're going to load it up so you guys can see a bit of the action. And um, we're running it on a BG 5,500. Right, let's give it a throw. See if we can get a queen fish. Easy retrieve. Got a nice, nice firm tip on this one, which I prefer myself. Um, and then also handles the, the heavier spoons beautifully um, and lands, lands the bigger fish there. Doubles up beautiful as a bait rod as well. So, yeah, great for targeting Jew, um, Taylor, and the likes. So, yeah, you can easily cast a, a four ounce with a bait. So, we have no problems casting that. Um, and generally, uh, well, underrated, I suppose, on its casting power. So, it will cast heavier. With this rod again, you're not going to have any problems landing a good sized GT. Um, even a, a decent Spanish mackerel you're going to have no problems whatsoever. Um, it's got a good backbone and will certainly fight and do, do the job, bring it in uh, within a few minutes. And uh, we got a bit of a pickup. It's got a nice little side of it. It's uh, throwing a little snook spoon on the Power Angler version 2, the school of mullet there, looking for some bait. So we'll take this one uh, and slide it out, hopefully pick up a mackerel. Oh, this is really good friends, yeah. taking uh, his mate a beer. Because you can't fish no, without beer. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't walk that far. Okay guys, we moved to a different spot for the afternoon session. Oh! oh. And as you oh. saw, Don was the first with a bite yeah. and an off bite. <laughs> oh, sorry man. That was lucky. Bastard. Good start. Yeah. It's a bronze whaler. A What's dusky whaler. Dusky whaler. Yeah. Hey. Bastard. What I, what I was sliding last night. I just took a, a nice cast and uh, came in a bit so Don also just had a pick up and got broken off. So you have to kind of uh, kind of make little adjustments to just make sure that we possibly get a good fish on. A lot of black fins or spinners here and spinners, not all. They talk that the, the guys all here speak as if there's only spinners here. But they really, really do look like uh, black fins. We'll obviously look at the footage when we're back in South Africa. But uh, you get spun off a lot. So you have to fish for black fins with your, your nylon coated leader. And we fish 200 pounds with the hooks. A loose drag in the pipe, that's normally the best way. They don't get enough leverage or uh, pressure on the line to, to break your trace. But they can still spin you off if you don't fish a steel leader. So we'll try that. Most important is to get your bait down as quick as possible to the stopper. And uh, again guys, sliding, still one of the best ways of getting a big bait out. Uh, yeah, for the Spanish mackerel, for the GTs, ideal bait, but you do pick the sharks up all the time. And there's a whole bunch of species here. So you're gonna fish nine on coated seal traces. We've even tried uh, Kuta traces. As we know them in South Africa, the Spanish mackerel trace we use from the boat and uh, got bitten off on them. So now it's just straight 200 pound nylon coated and uh, get a big bait as far as you can. And when a mackerel comes past, a Spanish mackerel or a GT, they're not going to leave it necessarily, especially this time of the day as we go into the evening. It's a great time where you see the water is very visible. We actually have a bit, bit of bad luck here on Fraser with these conditions because it just makes the fishing so much more difficult. Most of the fish so far we've caught was mainly in the, uh, at night time. 
um, and when it's still fairly dark. Um, in daytime, yeah, we haven't seen too many, too many sharks being hooked. But let's get shaking. Right, guys, we just slid out of coming into dusk. Uh, we've got a whole mullet out here on a standard slide, and we've just been picked up. Um, at the moment, it doesn't feel like it's just too big. And running in to my forward. So, let's keep the pressure on. See if we can crank her in. Guys, we're still still on the same fish. Uh, should be moving left and right, uh, making the guys run over a few lines. Um, might have underestimated the size. Other than that, oh, we got it. She's got uh, the leader wrapped around her when she jumped. Um, so yeah, just going to tie her out. Hopefully I'm not tied up before it. So we got the Dawa Saltiga uh, with the Kingfisher Giant Abrasion and the Kingfisher Poseidon HMT. It's doing its job and she's going again. Uh, but yeah, holding up to the fight. And we're gonna work her in. She's running to the left again. Just gonna go down and fetch her. Saltiga 50HA and the Poseidon 36T. Um, yeah, good fight, and we're going to release her so she can find another day. Well done. That's how you do it. Quick pull, unfortunately you guys saw that the lead his stomach out normally when a shark or a lot of fish do that, they feel something's wrong, they regurgitate or throw up to see if it's something they ate or whatever, I don't know exactly what they're doing, but it's not a bad thing, they do swallow it back, you can try and push it a bit, but I prefer just leaving it and they just suck it back in and uh, yeah, she swam off strong, good work, good fish, yeah, thank hey? you. Showed us how yeah. to, to pull a tiger. <laughs>